there's a month long. Uh, this is another one that I want to talk about. It's 3,000 workers at stri- uh, on strike at two different Toyota Kirloskar Motors, TKM. Um, they're on strike right now. And here's here's what's going on with that, right? Again, this is this is not being covered in corporate media at all, uh, as most strikes aren't. So you have to come to, I don't know, a weird fucking socialist Indian comedian uh, and uh, with uh, an incredible beard. Uh, I, and I, and yes, I am, I am talking shit on Lee camp a little bit here. Uh, I love Lee, but I'm going to make fun of his beard because he thinks his beard is better than mine, which it's, which it's not. Um, but I will leave it up to you guys. Uh, you know, and if you say Lee's beard is better than mine, you know, I I respect people for being wrong. Uh, (laughs) anyway, here's what happened to TKM, right? Why they're, why these workers are on strike. They they essentially rejected the increase of work that they had to do, right? Uh, TKM basically said that we need to produce more cars. They need to produce a hundred thousand cars in a month instead of eighty thousand uh, to basically be competitive on the global market. They have to turn more profits, um, and so the the factory in India, make in India, right? That was Modi's big thing, make in India. Uh, and then now they're making in India and now they're like, Hey, work harder during a pandemic. Uh, we need to be competitive, even though all across the world, people are, are, are dealing with this voracious virus. It's, it's constantly, constantly taking people's lives. India has one of the, uh, India is the second worst country to deal with this virus. Um, go figure. You have a, a right wing populist party that is taking over that is in, 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 control of one of the biggest offices there and they're doing terribly right they're number two because number one is america usa usa (laughs) so the question should be why would you fucking need to try to make more cars people are not working there isn't a universal basic income in a bunch of these countries uh i really think that buying a car not really at the top of the list for a lot of people. And I understand that there are probably some people that need a new car or or looking to get a new car, right? There, and there are some people that can afford to get a new car. I'm not talking shit on people that purchase new cars or anything like that. I, I, I had to buy a new car last year. I, I'm not talking shit on that. But I'm saying the demand for cars isn't there. So again, the, the the virus has kind of flipped this idea of supply and demand, right? The reason why we constantly create keep creating new cards, constantly keep creating new versions of things is because the public demands it. The public demands that we need new computers, new phones every single year, new cars every single year, new cameras, new toys, new vibrators every single year. We need more and more and more. And th- that's what unfettered capitalism tells you. There's a demand for all these things. But right now, in the midst of the virus, you're, I mean, what, what's the demand on buying new cars? Are you guys clamoring for, 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 for a new version of the Toyota Camry right now? <laughs> Are there people out there in the streets? Um, is that something that I'm missing? Are there people out there in the streets holding up a sign saying, all wheel drive? All oh, like, are they fucking <laughs> yelling about that shit? Because if if they are, please leave a link in the comments. Uh, <laughs> because this is, oh man. So so you know they were the workers in this factory were basically like fucking why? Also, you're not paying us that much. Like you're or you're the wages are shit here. There's actually an interesting thing that that I want to point out before we get to 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 the the meat of this thing is. Uh, Toyota asks its middle management to also work on the assembly line, which means that middle management probably has quotas that they need to meet on the assembly line. Um, you know, so so it's a it, I don't really know how I feel about that. On one side, it does have that workplace democracy, like that worker co-op of like, cool, man, like middle management, also part of the people, which then means that middle management would fight on behalf of the people where in America, if you're in middle management, usually you have to side with, you know, the higher ups than the working class. Right. Uh, in this case, it's kind of pushing them to be a part of the working class. But also like, you know, you're working on the assembly line and you have quotas and, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's interesting. I, I will say that. 
Uh, but the gentleman that's leading that that led this um, pushback on TKM was a gentleman by the name of Umesh Goda Alor. Goda Alor. I mispronounced his name probably. Uh, and he pointed out that, look, the, the, the workers are pissed off that we have to increase production on this thing. It's a little ridiculous that we do. Um, uh, you know, for for the amount of work that we're doing, we're not getting paid properly, so on and so forth. And their response to that was uh, they basically did what Amazon did to Chris Smalls, uh, to Christian Smalls. They basically said that these guys are violating COVID guidelines um, and henceforth they're going to be suspended. They're going to be removed off. We're going to lock down the facility. Uh, and then on top of that, they also took away uh, suspended 39 other employees that they claimed were violating COVID guidelines. Right. So. Obviously, this was bullshit. The The reason why the Sumesh person was uh, suspended was because he brought up complaints that the workers were mad, that they had to increase production. I mean, this is no different than what happened in Amazon in March. In Staten Island or Long Island? One of the islands off, off New York. Christian Smalls was basically like, people are getting COVID and you want us to work harder because a lot more people are ordering stuff. We get it, but you can't you can't have us work in these conditions, especially when two of the employees caught COVID and you didn't tell anybody and you haven't sanitized the place. So then he gets then he organizes a strike and gets fired. Jeff Bezos calls him a bunch of names. I don't know if the CEO of TKM called Umesh Goda a bunch of names, but <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. But here's somebody that did call them a bunch of names, right? Uh, because on November 9th, the sit-in strike began. Uh, that's how long this thing's been going on, for almost, almost a month now. Um, and the sit-in strike begins, and the chief secretary in India uh, he imposes a curfew on the campus, right? The TKM campus. Uh, and he calls the strikers troublemakers. And again, this is classic fucking neoliberal conservative tactics to delegitimize union organization, delegitimize any organization efforts at all, to delegitimize strikes, to make them look like, oh, they're a bunch of freeloaders. Look at them asking for human rights, these fucking assholes. Right. And and instead, it, but they can't come out and say that because when you when you're against people asking for human rights, you seem like, oh, I don't know, a monster. Uh, so <laughs> they they delegitimize it by saying troublemakers uh, in, in the 20s. They they were using, uh, you know, the early versions of McCarthyism before before Joseph McCarthy. Uh, they And they were saying like, oh, this is Bolshevism. That's what this is. They're 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 going to take away your freedoms. And uh, and they're gonna punch you in the dick. That's what they're gonna do. They're the, the your freedoms are gone, and your dick is gonna be punched. Is that what? Is that how you want to live your life with a punched out dick and no freedoms? No, sir. You believe in capitalism because capitalism gives you all the dicks, and it only punches one of them uh, every Tuesday. So, not bad, not bad. You not bad at all. Uh, and really socialism is just like, Hey, what about dicks for people that want dicks? And then we have like an alternative, um, genitalia, such as a vagina, uh, for people that want that sort of stuff went way off the rails again. All right. Um, point being <laughs> the people will be, they, that's, they, they just call them names and they use different tactics, you know, McCarthyism or they'll demonize socialism or they'll say that they're a bunch of freeloaders and they want to increase your taxes and they want to take away your rights and do all this. Oh, they're troublemakers. Look out uh, to delegitimize it. The BJP then banned the strike, right? The, the This conservative party that's really more in line with the neoliberal economic principles of the Democratic Party in the United States. They delegitimized the, the strike and they just said the strike isn't real. We're banning it. It's not it's not happening. And uh, TKM. On November 18th, the the BJP asked TKM to fully lock down their facilities and that didn't end the strike. Right. The idea was if they lock down the facilities fully, uh, these strikers won't be able to get in or around them and the strike will have to end. They'll they'll squash the strike uh, by forceful means. Well, the workers opposed that lockdown and they continued <laughs> to strike and another lockdown was imposed on November 23rd. 
uh, that's the last time that we heard about this. And here's the thing. All this stuff seems legal. And companies get away with this stuff all the time, right? Companies get to essentially come out and say, well, well, you have to do this because, well, you don't want to get, you want to get paid, right? You want to be able to feed your family. If you want to feed your family, then you'll, then you'll meet our quota demands. These quota demands are important for the company. The company is the thing that pays you. Don't you want to make money? So essentially, uh, capitalism ends up using the idea of money to hold the worker hostage because without money, how are you going to feed your family? How are you going to afford health care? That's what's happening in the United States. That's what's happening in, in countries that privatize their healthcare system. Healthcare is, is hooked in with work, right? So, you know, if you're if you're on strike, then you don't get your health care. Your kid gets sick, somebody in your family gets sick, and they go to a hospital. Do you want to be burdened with billions of dollars of of medical debt? I mean, you're still gonna be burdened with medical debt, but it'll be kinda less. They hold you hostage, and that's that's why strikes like this are discouraged, and that's why behavior like this is becomes acceptable. You have to make that Sophie's choice. Do you want to live your life in dignity or make money? Why not both? Why why can't you be able to make money and and have a, a decent life where you don't have to constantly stress about putting food on your table? And live a decent life where you don't have to be embarrassed about where you work. But they get away with it. That's why we have shitty bosses. That's why we put up with shitty bosses. Isn't it? We put up with the condescending assholes, the rude dicks, the people that will sexually harass you and use their power as a point of privilege. That's why we... Deal with those people. Because, because we're being held hostage with health care and money. You can't feed your family and you can't keep them healthy. So it becomes this, I can treat you however I want because I control those things. The reason why the strikes don't get covered and the reasons why the strike gets demonized is because they show you otherwise. That there is a different way to do things that the workers do have power, that they don't have to use money and health care as a way to control the populace. Because they don't. Exploitation is the real value in capitalism. How can I exploit the worker to make more money for me? It's been happening for years. And if you pay attention to history... You can see that how many people have fought back against it and the defenses, right, that, that capitalism has built up is the military, is militarizing the police forces in the United States. It's creating an intelligence community that fights back against people that, ta that essentially point out the, the truth about capitalism. And it's evident in things like critical infrastructure laws. That you can't protest or or strike against a certain corporation. These boilerplate laws. Trashing socialism. Using the media as a point of propaganda. It's about maintaining this control by any means necessary. And that means that they're talking about is to use money in healthcare as a point of exploitation. So they maintain the control. So so you can't ask for a raise. Because if you ask for a raise, you might get fired. And if you get fired, where's that health care? Where's that money? How are you going to feed your family? Uh, you know, it, it becomes this vicious cycle. Socialism is, is about responsibility to each other. It's like 1919. In every single strike, in every single general strike that we have seen, and I've talked a lot about general strikes on this channel, uh, is you end up seeing people that are taking care of each other, right? In in Seattle in 1919, you saw that. 
the organizers just came together and they said, okay, uh, we, we got some vets here. You, you guys are going to kind of maintain the order. If somebody gets violent, you know, we'll, we'll kind of take them out of, um, uh, to, to not be violent in this society. If people need food, we have some places to get food in 1934 in Minneapolis, uh, farmers, farmers just came in and gave food to strikers because they believed in their cause. So what's to stop the healthcare industry from looking at as a, you know, a bunch of strikers and the healthcare industry in America is going on strike now. I talked about that last week. The nurses are going on strike because they're being treated like shit. So what's to stop the healthcare industry from saying, you know what, the strikers hurt and I have the expertise and I have the facilities to do it. And the administrative staff at, at, at the hospitals go, yeah, beds open. Not, not, not a damn thing. Red tape hospital policies and shit well those go out the window when those policies are no longer representative of what that industry stands for and taking care of the working class and taking care of people if we start running a society that way man that's that's the scariest thing to to unfettered capitalism that's the scariest thing to people in positions of power. The Narendra Modi's, the, the the Netanyahu's, the Biden's, the Trump's, the the Pelosi's and the McConnell's and the Schumer's. That's what they're scared of the most is when people start taking care of each other and they go, well, wait a minute. I, maybe maybe hospitals should be shouldn't we shouldn't be paying for them. Maybe that should be a publicly run institution. Why is it connected to religion? Why is it connected to, to, to privatization? Why is it connected to the pharmaceutical industry and the insurance companies? And why is it that even though it's connected to the insurance companies, what we still have end up being in medical debt? That's the truth of all of it. It starts ha having people question a lot of this stuff. And that questioning... Just the mere notion of questioning is so dangerous to people. That's why critical thinking isn't taught in schools, even though it should be. And that should be a, a very important part of education. Support these strikes. Talk about them a lot more. Um, that's how we make general strikes happen. So rule number, you know, that's rule number one is you got to talk about them, talk about them, talk about them. Make it, make that normal. Make that normal. I think we're gonna we're gonna end it right there. Uh, you guys have been you guys have been super super lovely, Missy. How's it going? Your beard is far superior. Thank you. I I, I do think that my beard is far superior than Lee's. Uh, there have been many a car ride uh, that uh, he is believed the opposite. And and look, I love Lee, but you know. Uh, sometimes he's wrong and in the in the in the face of my beard he's wrong uh thank you for for saying that uli I, I really appreciate it i'm sorry facebook was being a little choppy i hope um you know if, if you guys had some other issues youtube or, or rockfin.com or two of the other places that i do stream i'm gonna try to figure out how to include i guess instagram on this as well i don't know if that's like a thing but um i'm old i'm you know the, the hospitals, yeah, I do think that the healthcare industries um, should be, should be. I mean, that, I really think that that's going to be the spark. Is if more nurses across the country um, join in in some kind of a strike, if there's a major healthcare strike, um, that would uh, that would very much um, kind of spark a general strike in this country. Uh, we were still taught critical thinking when I went to school. Hence, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think critical thinking was taught a, taught a little bit, but a lot of what I remember is, uh, uh, you know, don't question authority kind of thing. Um, thank you for for joining us to F4U Steel from from all the way from India. Uh, you, you, th thanks for hanging out with us and uh, rest easy. Uh, yes, I'm 32 years old, Uli. That's old. I pulled my neck trying to do pull ups the other day. And I stretched in my bed and I and uh, my my abs hurt. So, uh, yes, I'm very old.
Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to, to, to address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.